Hey, third grade, it is um, Friday already, and I forgot to add a video yesterday. Um, but we did get to chat, and um, hopefully you are finding this okay on my YouTube channel. I did move it out of the playlist and just onto the main channel, so I'm hoping that that might solve that problem for many of you. We are in part seven um, from Miranda's point of view. This chapter is called School. I hardly saw Bia at school this year, and when I did, it was awkward. It felt like she was judging me. I knew she didn't like my new look. I knew she didn't like my group of friends. I didn't much like hers. We never actually argued. We just drifted away. Ella and I badmouthed her to each other. She's such a prude. She's so this. She's so that. We knew we were being mean. But it was easier to ice her out if we pretended she had done something to us. The truth is, she hadn't changed at all. We had. We'd become these other people and she was still the person she'd always been. That annoyed me so much and I didn't know why. Once in a while, I'd look to see where she was sitting in the lunchroom or check the elective list to see what she'd signed up for. But except for a few nods in the hallway and an occasional hello, we never spoke to each other. I noticed Justin about halfway through the school year. I hadn't noticed him at all before then, other than that he was this, this skinny, cutish dude with thick glasses and longish hair who carried a violin everywhere. Then one day I saw him in front of the school with his arm around Bia. So Bia has a boyfriend, I said to Ella, kind of mocking. I don't know why it surprised me that she'd have a boyfriend. Out of the three of us, she was totally the prettiest. Blue, blue eyes and long, wavy, dark hair. But she just never acted like she was at all interested in boys. She acted like she was too smart for that kind of stuff. I had a boyfriend too, a guy named Zach. When I told him I was choosing the theater elective, he shook his head and said, careful you don't turn into a drama geek. Mm, not the most sympathetic dude in the world, but very cute, very high up on the totem pole, a varsity jock. All right, I'm gonna step in here. Definitely not the way you look for um, the people who you want to let into your life. You sh don't pick people based on how attractive they are. You should be basing it on how kind they are, how they treat people, how they treat you. Um, that doesn't sound like someone who's treating her with a lot of respect if he's saying, don't turn into a drama geek. I don't like that. I wasn't planning on taking theater at first. Then I saw Via's name on the sign-up sheet and just wrote my name down on the list. I don't even know why. We managed to avoid one another throughout the most throughout most of the semester, like we didn't even know each other. Then one day I got to theater class a little early and Davenport asked me to run off additional copies of the play he was planning on having us do for the spring production, The Elephant Man. I'd heard about it, but I didn't really know what it was about. So I started skimming through the pages while I was waiting for the Xerox machine. It was about a man who lived more than a hundred years ago named John Merrick, who was terribly deformed. We can't do this play, Mr. D, I told him when I got back to class, and I told him why. My little brother had a birth defect and has a deformed face, and this play would hit too close to home. He seemed annoyed and a little unsympathetic, but I kind of said that my parents would have a real issue with the school doing this play. So anyway, he ended up switching to our town. So she stuck with her lie. And this time with someone pretty close to her. Um, it'd be, I think, pretty easy for him to figure this lie out. All right. I think I went for the role of Emily Gibbs because I knew Via was going to go for it too. It never occurred to me that I'd beat her for the role. I can read one more chapter. This is called What I Miss Most. One of the things I miss the most about Via's friendship is her family. I loved her mom and dad. They were always so welcoming and nice to me. I knew they loved their kids more than anything. I always felt safe around them, safer than what anywhere else in the world. How pathetic that I felt safer in someone else's house than in my own, right? And of course, I loved Augie. I was never afraid of him, even when I was little. I had friends that couldn't believe I'd ever go over to Via's house. His face creeps me out, they'd say. You're stupid, I'd tell them. Augie's face isn't so bad once you get used to it. I called Via's house once just to say hello to Augie. 
Maybe part of me was hoping Via would answer. I don't know. Hey, Major Chap, I said, using my nickname for him. Miranda! He sounded so happy to hear my voice. It actually kind of took me by surprise. I'm going to a regular school now, he told me excitedly. Really? Wow, I said, totally shocked. I guess I never thought he'd go to a regular school. His parents have always been so protective of him. I guess I thought he'd always be that little kid in the astronaut helmet I gave him. Talking to him, I could tell he had no idea that Via and I weren't close anymore. It's different in high school, I explained to him. You end up hanging out with loads of different people. I have some friends in my new school, he told me, a kid named Jack and a girl named Summer. That's awesome, Augie, I said. Well, I was just calling to tell you I miss you and hope you're having a good year. Feel free to call me whenever you want, okay, Augie? You know I love you always. I love you too, Miranda. Say hi to Via for me. Tell her I miss her. I will. Bye. Bye. Okay. I am going to stop there. Um, and have a fabulous weekend. I will see you later.